Did you know that April was AAPI Heritage Month? Recently, I had a chance to catch up with Sarita Rao, President Integrated and Partner Solutions at AT&T about work culture and the future of work. So hi, Sarita. It's so wonderful to chat with you again. So last month, April, is AAPI Heritage Month, and I saw your absolutely beautiful heartfelt post about your mom. It caught my eye. And uh, you referenced your own experience at at and and you described the AAPI-focused employee groups as more than just meeting places. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means and why is that important? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think uh, our employee resource groups are so central um, and important to our overall culture because typically um, they're really active and focused on actions more than words. So even if I look at just the AAPI um, employee groups, there's five of them. One's focused on the needs of Asian Pacific women in terms of facilitating engagement, education, development. Another is called Pulse of India, focused on bringing together the diverse cultural backgrounds from the uh, from India into a common platform to develop leaders. And the one that I've been fortunate enough um, to be on the advisory board for is an organization called OASIS, and I've had uh, the good fortune of watching them evolve over the years. And OASIS stands for the Organization of Asian Indians. And um, when I say these groups are about actions, not words, probably no better example than um, how OASIS and our other employee groups um, and our employees uh, that might not have been part of the group really um, came together during the second wave of COVID in 2021. Um, if you remember the headlines, COVID was really devastating uh, much of India. So OASIS and the other employee groups, they quickly mobilized to support um, as part of a task force, raising more than $265,000 in just a few weeks for employees and communities uh, in India who were the hardest hit. And it was truly a grassroots operation where everyone pitched in, they took their personal time, they understood why moving quickly uh, was important and they really helped change the environment. And, and I think if you um, think about that, and, and the reason I referred to it in, in the blog is, you know, my parents uh, migrated here, so I'm first generation um, being raised here, but I spent a lot of time going back forth in India. I've been had the good fortune of taking folks of my friends um, that, that aren't Indian back to India and exposing them to India. So during those difficult times, it was really nice to know that when you're distant from your homeland, uh, that there is a tremendous effort um, and comfort. There's, a treme uh, there's tremendous comfort in knowing that um, there's a wide reaching network at AT&T. So like the company's behind you to help you. Yeah, it is so important to it feels like it's more than just a place you work. It's yes. a place that you belong, it's a place that is part of your life. And, and I, lo I love that story, especially now more than ever. Absolutely, absolutely. So last time when we mm -hmm. talked, you had mentioned you have spent a long time working at AT&T. Mm -hmm. From a work culture perspective, I'm always curious through all the years, mm -hmm. what are some of the more significant changes that you have witnessed? Well, I would imagine, you know, probably all of us, right, have experienced this, especially over the last few years, is the shift to a work from home or a hybrid model during COVID. So if we were talking about, right, you know, before you push the record button, um, many things have changed. Uh, we are more prepared now to work from home as need be versus it being a, uh, uh, you know, something complicated, something that you only do in times of disaster. And, and it wasn't without its challenges, right, uh, when we first went to go work from home. But in large part, we're able to quickly pivot and, and still maintain a sense of rhythm in terms of getting work done. So we saw a great deal of productivity and it, the large part of that is due to the connectivity that companies like AT&T provide, um, which makes it easier just to connect from anywhere. You realize how mobile your life can be when you go through this. Um, when you have to get on conference calls, at, I, I know you've got kids, you're kind of, especially when you're working from home, you might be juggling multiple things. So to be able to connect quickly and securely and seamlessly, I think is um, just absolutely amazing where technology brought us. I think back to, when I first went to go work from home, gosh, like 20 some years ago, we were doing a trial. That was a process, right? Whereas now 
it's just so incredibly easy and technology has brought us there. You know, other big culture shifts are seeing more women uh, rise to greater levels in corporate structure. We still have more work to do on that front, as you know, uh, but it's encouraging uh, to see the amount of progress that's happened. So I would say in my long uh, tenure, as you called it, uh, those are probably two of the big things that I see. Um, and, you know, probably the other, the third one I would say is um, seeing more Asians in non-technical jobs. Um, you know, when I used to walk the halls, I was um, one of few of, or many times the only one in a non-technical job. Um, so seeing that has uh, been a big shift as well. Oh, my God. I I remember those days because I started in telecom and most of the Asians, and, and I hate generalization, but most of the Asians were in, in coding and engineering, yeah. right? Software development, application development. And, and, and you see that shift happening and, and it's nice because it brings different thoughts to different parts of the company. And that is so Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Different viewpoints at the table. Yes. Um, no matter what your specialization is, is, is important. You know that. Absolutely. So speaking of which, right, mm -hmm. there's a lot of talk about what is the future of work or what should it be like? Mm -hmm. And we're moving a little bit closer to a version where, as you say, we can work anywhere, anytime. Um, having flexibility is so important. What do you think are the key elements that organizations need to consider when it comes to enabling flexible work arrangements for different people? Because everyone is different, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think we're all still trying to figure that out because everyone is so different. There isn't a cookie cutter approach we can take. We know a few things, right? We know we miss seeing each other in person and we felt a sense of lost collaboration during the pandemic. We know that um, and we had to adjust. Uh, we had to adjust at home. We had to adjust to the way that we worked. Um, but it's undeniable that working from home offers a great deal of flexibility and it's a huge benefit to many workers. So I think it's important um, when you're coming to the table and talking to your leadership team and, and talking amongst your group to keep that balance in mind. The same answer doesn't work for everybody, nor does it work for every position. Um, and employees need to feel valued, productive, and collaborative. So what do they need to feel valued, productive, and collaborative? And I think that's a conversation that employers need to have um, so we can make sure we have a balance, but still meeting the demands of our customers and our clients, because that's why we're all here, right? Um, so it, it definitely um, is going to vary from company to company, uh, even team to team within the company, and that's okay. Um, we just need it to be a solution that works for everyone. And I think that's something um, I really enjoy about the way we're doing it here at AT&T. Um, it's a two-way conversation. Um, it's not a mandate. It's a two-way conversation, and we're really recognizing it depends on the role that you're in. Two way conversation that is so important. And I remember we had talked about different generations, right? And right. we all prefer to work different ways. Um, we have different needs, if you will. So what should we be doing to foster more intergenerational collaboration and understanding, knowing that we all start from a different point? How do we get the best of both worlds? Well, it's difficult to paint uh, with a broad brush across various generations, right? So not all members uh, of the silent generation are just putting in their time, nor are the Gen Z folks on focused on job hopping. Um, so we got to get away from some of those stereotypes. But innovation, insight, and uh, creativity can come from all segments of the workforce. So it's really about creating opportunities for people to come together and learn from each other. Um, if you have a culture that supports listening to each other, I think that's the real boost. I, I find that that listening is probably one of the the hardest sometimes, um, but one of the most basic needs. And then when employees are given a safe space to share what um, and know that their ideas will be considered, I think that's really important as managers. We have an obligation to make sure um, that we're cross pollinating our teams and projects with a good mix of of background and experiences. And I've always believed in this concept of walking in the other one's shoes, right? Um, if you can't relate to it, then you're going to have a hard time adjusting for it um, or understanding why an adjustment needs to be made. So having that open line of communications and not just saying you do, but really listening, I think is going to be critically important. Well, I think we can all hmm. use a little bit more listening. Um, I know for sure I do. So. Before we close, I want to ask you something, speaking mm -hmm. of listening, right? So with 
more things moving to digital, mm -hmm. what can businesses do to make sure that they are listening to their customers and meeting consumers where they are? What are some of the interesting use cases that you've seen and things we can look forward to? Well, I mean, if your company went all or, or mostly digital um, in a hurry during the pandemic, so did your customers. So now we're all taking a step back. Many companies are taking a step back to reevaluate. There's certain things that I think we're always going to see now. We're always going to see those QR codes. You never saw those QR codes at restaurants <laughs> yes. before, right? Um, but what it's clear, it's it's about making it um, clear that your focus is the customer, not just the technology uh, that the customer's may be using to engage with you. So even if your customer tells you they're satisfied, they well know how easy it is to switch from one digital platform to another, which they will do if your competitor has offerings you don't. So I think that's really important. Your competition is not limited to those in your industry vertical either. So if Uber knows everything about their customer, then your customers expect your company to also. So never ask customers to repeat information when moving between departments. Listening today means asking customers data down to a granular um, level to provide smooth tailored experience uh, for any uh, niche or kind of broader customer experience. But you know, fortunately the, the digital customer experience, getting little things right can pay a huge um, dividend, right? Because that means your customer feels heard they feel valued, they feel taken care of. So um, you've been on those calls where you're calling in, someone asks you to keep repeating those kind of key components about yourself. Imagine if they already had that up on the screen, it would be a time saving for you. It would lessen your frustration. And But we also as consumers have to be careful in understanding that it takes large companies, it takes companies of small sizes, a lot of investment. So it takes time to, to be there. So I've always believed in filling out the survey at the end. Right, so you can give feedback and make sure folks understand where they are on that journey. Because if you want folks to improve, feedback is uh, is important as well. I like that so much, um, and hopefully, it's positive feedback as well, right. so that people feel encouraged to keep doing what they're doing. Yep. So thank you so much for spending time with me today, Sarita. No it's problem. It's always wonderful chatting with you. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye bye.